How are you? Good. Thank you. And how are you? <laughs> good, really good. 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 But how long have you been um, creating all these wonderful paintings? Yeah, since I moved to the United States, which is like 19 years ago, I started painting animals all of a sudden. Before that, it was landscapes and um, yeah, so I, I went deeply into animals and uh, we have a few kind of hanging around here yes. and, and um, I just love um, putting a lot of expression into the eyes so people who view the painting um, can connect with the eyes of the animal and feel their connection to the animal and the compassion. We love our vegan lifestyle. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's the greatest thing to be vegan and it's so delicious, so freeing. And um, yeah, we just love nature, animals, uh, the water, the air, and it's uh, much, much less polluting. Could you tell us more about your book, The World Peace Diet, please? Sure, yeah, this is what it looks like, and the cover is done by Madeline, and uh, the World Peace Diet was the number one Amazon bestseller uh, a few months back, and um, so the basic idea in the World Peace Diet is that if we live a life of kindness and compassion, not only for other human beings, but for all living beings, for animals, and for future generations, and for the environment, then we will be worthy, really, we'll, we will mature and be able to um, create a world where we can live together in harmony and peace with freedom and joy and sustainability. So the basic idea is to m encourage people to move toward a more plant-based diet, to question eating meat and dairy and eggs because what I figured out is that we only do that because of the programming from our culture, we, from our parents and teachers and the corporations and um, the government and all of that, but it's really not in our best interest because it's not good for our health to eat a lot of meat and dairy and eggs or eat, really eat any. And um, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for hungry people who, like Madeline said, are starving because we're feeding most of the grain to animals and then we kill the animals and <laughs> while people are starving. And it's not good for the workers who have to do this terrible work of killing animals. So. It's just a great thing to, to move toward a more plant-based diet and uh, you know we've been vegans for many many years you know a long time like 30 years and uh, it's just a great way to live it's much smaller environmental footprint which is a big thing for us we have solar panels on the roof and we try to live with a very small uh, eco footprint so that um, we're not harming the earth and, and the, you know, using a lot of water uh, using a lot of energy, um, using a lot of land, creating a lot of pollution. We try to, you know, Americans, we use so much land and water and pollution and we really destroy the earth and destroy the lives of other human beings and animals because we, we are big consumers. We're consuming and the me eating meat and dairy is the biggest, worst consuming thing anyone can do. It's the worst thing for the oceans, for the rainforest. You know, we go down and visit in South America and we see how the rainforests are getting cut down and the forests are being cut down. And we travel all over this country, you know, slowly moving around and we see how forests have been cut down here to grow huge monocropped fields of corn and soybeans that are polluted, they're genetically engineered, uh, they're sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides and all kinds of toxic fertilizer and so forth and then fed to animals. And this kills the birds and the fish and the wildlife and the insects and pollutes and the, the, all the uh, sewage is very polluting. So it's a very uh, crazy system. I mean, it makes no sense. It, it's really insane, actually, what we're doing. We're, we're cutting down over an acre per second of rainforest to grow grain to feed animals while people are starving and, and destroying, and we're, we're, we're making whole species go extinct. You know, right now we're losing many, many species every single day. Um, because we're cutting down rainforests and destroying habitat and, and the oceans are being s completely depleted of fish because we're not only catching fish for people but we're catching fish to feed all these animals. You know, cows are eating as much uh, fish as human beings are to make them fatten up and also to make them give more milk. So it's a system that makes a lot of money for a few people 
and makes people quite unhealthy, which again makes money for the pharmaceutical industry and other large corporations, but it's not healthy for us and for animals and for future generations. And the beauty is any one of us can question this and find out, you know, go on the internet or just do your own research, read the World Peace Diet, <laughs> look at Madeline's paintings, and, and uh, look at the, look at the uh, animals and see these animals are not just things, they're not just objects that are pieces of meat, they're actually beings, you know, dogs, cats, horses, humans, I mean, we're all cows, chickens, and, and we're all animals in a sense that are living on this planet and, and they have feelings also and have feelings right they have feelings and have yearnings and can suffer so we know we wouldn't want to have done to us what we're doing to them exactly. <laughs> so that's I think the, the key and we're, we find it's just a, a beautiful thing for people uh, for relationships we find people when they go vegan they're, they're more loving they get along better they're less um, uh, irritated it's just a much more peaceful way to live. Do you have a house in Vilcabamba, Ecuador? So could you let us know? I'm, I'm from Ecuador, so I'm very excited about and curious about uh, what you have to say about uh, that specific area that have scientists, um, I mean, scientists travel from all over the world to try to find out the secrets of this longevity. So right. could, you, could you tell us? Well, just briefly, you know, Vilcabamba, we heard about it because of that, you know, and, and because we have some family members that have moved down to Ecuador. But um, we found out about Vilcabamba because it's very famous. It's this little valley, people probably don't know, in the southern part of Ecuador near Peru, where people seem to live over 100 years old and, and um, for, for a long time. And so they think it's a combination perhaps of the the beautiful water that comes from the Andes Mountains. It's got lots of minerals uh, that are very healthy in the right proportion and the people are also breathing very healthy air. There's the, the, the trees are really good and the also um, they're living lives that don't have a lot of stress. And really especially before um, the Western corporations came in, like Coca-Cola now unfortunately comes in and uh, brings a brings a truck every week and <laughs> the Vilcabamba, you know, but I think, you know, so things have started changing, unfortunately, but, but uh, originally, you know, people worked hard, they gardened, they were farmers, they lived simple lives, they grew their own food, they ate their own food, they didn't need any money, you know, they didn't need to buy anything, they were happy people living simple lives with strong communities and grew their own food, and it's a very nice climate, it's about 5,000 feet, so it's, you know, in the 70s year-round, and uh, I think just being happy and having a strong community connections is really what it is to be a human being. I mean, why are we here? We're not here to, to fight and achieve and compete. We're here, I think, really to do in many ways what they were doing, which is to have good families and grow our own food and, and uh, be creative. And uh, so I think there's something to, for us to learn uh, from that example. Well, I think it's very telling that most people, when, when Madeline and I talk about this, you know, we can talk about how important it is to have peace. Everybody goes, yes. How important it is to be kind and compassionate to others. Everybody goes, yes, yes. And we say, and, and, we, and we shouldn't be harming and killing animals and eating them for food. And they go, don't talk about that. You know, so people are basically, and I understand it, you know, we're so indoctrinated and programmed to think that animals are just put here by God for us to eat, that we don't think that there's any karma in our violence. But there is. I mean, every spiritual teacher has acknowledged that when you harm a sentient being, you harm yourself more than you harm them. Because we have to harden ourselves and disconnect from our natural compassion, and we create whole systems of violence and domination that not only harm the animals, they harm us. We, we create psychological suffering and, and uh, all kinds of diseases and, in, and cultural uh, violence that goes along with it, the inequality and uh, exploitation and oppression of women and of other people, of ecosystems, of other nations. I mean, all this comes from people who have learned to, through, through meals every single day, have learned to disconnect from seeing beings as beings and see beings just as things and learn at a deep level to think in terms of privilege and elitism and domination and exploitation and exclusion and, do and the, especially the domination of the feminine dimension. I, I talk about that in the World Peace Diet quite a bit because I think this feminine 
uh, dimension that we all have, which nurtures life, is very repressed by forcing children to eat meat and dairy products. And these animals, especially the female animals, are very abused. But we don't, you know, we cover it up. But there's anyone can go on the internet and just look at the some of the undercover videos, you know, and see what happens to cows on dairies, to hens on egg production facilities, to pigs on, you know, these factory farms for meat. And there's no way to kill an animal humanely. I mean, it's all violence. And the, there is. I never use the word karma, but it is. It's, it, it's the universal teaching that whatever you sow, you're going to reap. We all know that. I mean, we think we can get away with this. We think we can somehow plant corn and seeds and get, you know, uh, carrots coming up. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen. We're planting violence and misery. It's, it's and a law, yeah. Back. Right. It's a law. I mean, it's, uh, we should, we should uh, grow up, I think, and realize that. So what, what do you think about the, the same subject? Yeah, I think uh, Will uh, tells it really right, um, poignant, really. Um, I think it's so sad to go out there and see uh, the rivers polluted because um, we, we love to swim and um, fish have the right to have clean water to swim around and not to die because of pollution and um, to have clean air and everything and we can really change we can change our habits of eating and uh, get this beautiful earth back with all its health right I, yeah and i think also what madeline is saying is that there's um it's possible but there's a sense i think of healthy urgency you know it's healthy i mean if we if we see the world being uh in many ways destroyed uh, environmentally. We see the economic systems uh, that are so unhealthy that they have, you know, have so many people just literally starving or right on the edge of existence while others have so much more than they know what to do with that. Uh, and we see species going extinct and this kind of devastation that it's, a, it's a, a sense of being alive and healthy. We don't have to be angry and fight people, but to just encourage each other to question what we've been doing and to do something positive you know and that's why I love uh, vegetarianism and vegan especially veganism because it's not so much about criticizing it's not about criticizing it's about doing something positive it's about being loving <laughs> and kind and compassionate and caring and healthy and living a life as a celebration and uh, being joyful and and looking but it really is I think essentially is is radical inclusion it's saying I'm no longer going to exclude anyone from the sphere of my kindness and compassion and concern. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all it is. It's just saying I'm going to include other human beings, hungry people, all animals, future generations, all beings within the sphere of my compassion. And we find that when we live that way, it's not only better for others, it's really better for ourselves. I mean, we are much happier when we're living that way and we feel more connected to the beauty of this earth. And, we f and, we, and the more we do it, the more we just love life and love all animals and all people and love is the only ultimately the only power and the revolution that we're yearning for is a revolution of love and veganism is nothing to be proud of it's not anything we're not in any way any better than anyone it's just That's it's true. basically just coming home to our own heart and looking with eyes that see beings rather than seeing things we're taught by our culture to see a thing we see a pig we say well that's a piece of meat that is a very violent seed that's planted in us ritually by being, you know, eating bacon and ham and cheese and eggs. So we have to question that and see a being when we see a being, and then we naturally respect and love them, and then we have respect for ourselves. We have to treat everyone with kindness and respect. Yes, I always say that love is the answer. Love is the mm -hmm. answer. That's yes. it. And, and veganism is just love in action. Living love. Living yeah. love. Living yeah. love. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You are a composer also. Oh, yes. Yeah. I play oh, yeah. the piano and do a lot of concerts. Every weekend I do a concert, a piano concert. These are the CDs over here you can mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, and Madeline's an artist and she paints right here and we oh, yeah. uh, do art and music as well as lectures and mm -hmm. courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you something. Who does the cooking? <laughs> I do the cooking and Will does the booking. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> so he books our events. We uh, take out the map and 
and uh, we look where we are and where we like to go. We go south in the winter and north in the summer. So um, we look how we like to tour around and we book everything like about six months in advance. I'm very curious about how do you harness the power of the sun yeah. in order to um, lower your footprint mm -hmm. here in your mobile home? Right. Well, <coughs> we have um, basically on the roof of, a, of our RV, we have solar panels. We have one really big one, which is the same as two, and then we have two, and then we have three more. And then we have another one that we can set up outside. If we happen to be in a shady area, we can put it out there. So we have basically the equivalent of about um, five to six, really six solar panels, um, like 80 watt solar panels. And those all come in, the energy from those come in to this. Um, system up here which is a regulator uh, we can check and see how how um, charged our batteries are we have we started we started with a small system I installed it all myself we started with just one solar panel <laughs> and a, two little batteries and now we have all these solar panels and we have uh, six big golf cart batteries you know six little golf cart batteries and I built a, um, a metal compartment underneath the uh, rolling home to put all those in and so the energy basically just comes in through the regulator down into the batteries and then from that we can run everything in here. We can run all the lights, we can run the water pump, we can run the uh, piano and the computer, the Vitamix blender, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. we need to run, we can run with that, you know. So it's a really a very small footprint because the electrical energy comes from the sun and then the amount of water we need is very small too. We have uh, two 40 gallon tanks and we, so we just fill those up you know once or twice a week and that you know so then when we turn the faucet some water comes out it's kind of Do like Do you a, filter that water? And we filter it when it comes in and then we have another special filter for the drinking water yeah so we... Is there any special filter or any commercial filter? It's a regular commercial filter that that uh, is a good one you know to, because we're traveling and so we don't know we we'll get water from everywhere you know so um, so it gets out the um, the heavy metals and the fluoride and everything whatever we can get out we try to get get that out so um, but with the, the good thing is we don't use very much water and uh, we don't use very much electricity. The whole house is about 220 square feet. Mm -hmm. It's not that big, so we, but it's really nice for us. We live, you know, we're very happily, we're living in here now for 16 years. We can spend quite a bit of time outside because, you know, pretty soon we'll be in Florida where it's really warm and we're outside. And then in the summer, we're somewhere in the north where it's not too hot. So even though we have an air conditioner, I hardly ever use it. And we don't have to run a whole lot uh, of heating, heating either. We have propane, so we can, uh, propane is for the stove, the refrigerator can run on propane, and heating can come from propane. But one seven gallon tank usually lasts us, uh, you know, about a month or two, you know, so we don't use very much uh, for that either. So it's a great way to live, we found, if you do it this way, a small footprint uh, combined with Natalyn creating the great meals that are all plant based meals so we don't have any um, you know, waste there. And it's a really a very efficient way to live. And we grow our own sprouts now too. So we have, uh, we use, sometimes we've grown herbs and things like that, but we do grow a little bit of our food. From yesterday, I saw a flyer um, about some um, healthy recipes that you were oh, giving away. Yes. And you talk mm -hmm. about the colors also. Yes. That's important. Yes. Why the colors are important on your food? Oh. Um, it's important. I think it's beautiful. This is, I'm, I'm kind of living Very for modest. beauty. Yeah. Yes, beauty is my main thing. Uh, paint, everything. Paint the meals. Paint the meals. Um, yeah, and it's like for the person who eats the meal, it just appears differently than if it's all a brown mush kind of thing. So, and even if it's just beans and rice, uh, one can put a little parsley, a little uh, red pepper, or a little yellow squash or something, and make it really beautiful. And I think colors, uh, they're created because they mean something, whatever it means to the different person. It's important that it tastes good. Yes, and yes, and it yeah. looks good also. Yes. So what's your website, please? 
the website, Will, please. <laughs> Will, just my name, Will, W-I-L-L-T-U-T-T-L-E, willtuttle.com or worldpeacediet.com or worldpeacediet.org. Those are our websites. Yeah. So what besides um, these wonderful tips about cooking and the green smoothie video, what else they can find on your website? What other um, information? Yeah, they ha on the website we have Madeline's art. All of her prints are available. All of my albums are available. Our tour schedule, if you have anyone wants to see where we are, uh, it's all on there. Uh, the World Peace Diet book, the audio book, the, um, the, um, the e-book, you know, all the World Peace Diet articles that I've written, videos of lectures that I've given and um, videos of some of Madeline's cooking and also a link to our World Peace Diet Mastery Program and our World Peace Diet Facilitator Training. If you've read the World Peace Diet and you'd like to go more deeply into understanding how to thrive as a vegan and how to be effective in spreading the vegan message, we have a whole um, four week and an eight week, so it's actually a 12 week program. Uh, so it leads to certification as a World Peace Diet Facilitator. There's uh, several hundred people have gone through that already and and just spreading the idea is to spread the message around so mm -hmm. we have uh, quite a few different things we also have a link to on the circle of compassion website that's our other website we have a, a nonprofit organization we've created called circle of compassion and every day people all around the world say a prayer at noon for animals we uh, compassion encircles the earth for all living beings and so we have a uh, we have that and a daily veg inspiration for the day people can get if they want every day an inspiring quote uh, from me about being a vegetarian or being a vegan really so make sure you visit www.worldpeacediet.org or worldpeacediet.com <laughs>this is where I you know I can I create uh, music uh, here we have a whole um, we have a recording you know recording studio here um, as well it's all digital and then I use that in conjunction with the computer and then uh, the computer is really uh, connected to the through the internet with an antenna on the roof through the cell phone and so we have everything for that here and a, and a printer and uh, so uh, this is the, this is kind of where I spend quite a bit of time, either doing music, or working uh, on the on the internet, and, you know that kind of stuff. And then um, and then over here is the recording studio. And then over here is our our table that we made especially for everything. This is uh, a table that we specially made where we can uh, where we have our meals, where Madeline paints, uh, where I write, uh, and we just do everything on this table. <laughs> That's our everything table. And then we have file cabinets and our whole you know life. Here you can probably see these things that are stored. Most of all of these furniture you see, you know, I made myself. And um, Madeline does a lot of the art. You see, she did the sculpture of the uh, dolphins and all the paintings that you see around here. It's uh, something that we like to, you know, just uh, have our creativity around. We have uh, a sh you know bathroom and a shower. Do you want me to show you? Yeah. Sort of so Basically, we have our, our you know, we, we're self-contained, so we have our own bathroom here, and which we've, Madeline's decorated, and then on the other side of the hall, we have the shower, which uh, has a skylight, and, and oh, water's nice, all yeah. heated by, uh, by propane. This is um, uh, some of her paintings, and uh, yeah, this is where I actually sat here and did, I wrote most of the World Peace Diet uh, book sitting right here. All right. The runs are both uh, yeah. propane or electric. We can switch it back and forth, and uh, yeah, it's, yeah. There it is. So these are the sprouts, um, homegrown broccoli sprouts. Look how nice they. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty. Hmm? Okay, so now here we are up on the top of the world here on top of Dharma. Um, we have the air conditioner, our fans, refrigerator vent, and then those are the solar panels up at the front that we have. The the big block, those two. Uh, I can raise and lower on the front or the back to, to, uh, if I need to, but that's how we get our uh, electricity from the sun. And then we have our antenna here, which is really an antenna for the, um, the cell phone and also for the Wi-Fi for the computer. Well, I really appreciate the time that you spent with us and I wish you good luck on all the projects that you have in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. This is a great example how technology and spirituality goes hand in hand.
This is Jorge Mera, the producer of the show. Thank you for watching. And for more information, go to our website, www.healthyfoodhappyyou.com. See you next time.